Welcome back to the podcast with no name just yet. My name is Jackie Mancuso, and today I am joined once again by Victoria Cravanos. How you doing, Victoria? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. I'm uh, having a whole lot of magic happen in my life. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you were with me when I brought home my magical plant. Yeah, I was. Zizi. ZZ the Top. plant. Actually, her name is Celine. Celine ZZ the she plant. She is the ZZ plant. That was a magical experience. She told me her name was Celine, right? All my plants tell me their names. I asked them, I let them tell me. Huh? She said Celine, and I was like, okay. And at the time, I did not know that that was the moon goddess. So you asked the plant, not the lady at the plant shop. Absolutely. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Everything is a sentient being. Everything with energy can speak to you. You ever oh, talk to the fun. trees? You ever talk to your crystals? Yeah. I haven't asked them their names, though. You should try it sometime. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Did you do a poll today? I do a poll every day. I know you do. Today I was in my, <laughs> I, was in my uh, I was in my head this morning, as always, um, and I did a poll about how to outsell, sell out <laughs> my upcoming retreat. Mm. Essentially, what the card said was to celebrate everyone who is signed up right now, which I do. It's going to be awesome. I'm very excited. Even with the group of women that I have right now, it's going to be amazing. So celebrate everything you have now. Then, nose to the grind. Just work at it. Pour your passion into it. See what happens. And then the third, like, the ending card was about, um, like, being a brat about it, not appreciating it. So I kind of got the feel that my guides were bitch slapping me a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Just be grateful for what you have and <laughs> yeah. stop worrying. It is your first one ever. Yes. So I feel like... It's nerve-wracking. Well, I feel like you've already, you have a good amount of interest for the first one ever. It's going to be fun. It, it's going to be amazing. I have that rocket ship syndrome where if I get excited, I'm like, all right, we're going to do it all right now. And I forget yeah. that not the whole world is like that. I have that too. Yeah, definitely. So why are you throwing a retreat? We never explained who we are and <laughs> what our <laughs> basis is. So let's do that so people know. That might be a good thing to know. So let's let's go way back to the beginning. Who, oh my god. I don't know if we have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be succinct. So who is Jackie Mancuso? Jackie is a teacher. I am a master teacher. You know, I just figured that out. I did the numerology on my birthday mm -hmm. and my life path number is 33. That is oh. the master teacher. <laughs> the master of many things. <laughs> well, I am the Jackie of all trades. Hey. But. That's what I call myself. That's fun. The Jackie of all the trades? The Jack. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so that was just really interesting because I walked away from public education when the world got weird because I wasn't aligning with that. So I used to be a PE teacher and I was always that touchy feely teacher. Uh, metaphorically. <laughs> yeah, don't touchy feely any students. I was the emotional teacher who was there to like help these middle school kids through their problems. And the other PE teachers were just like, shut up and go run. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah, then the world got weird and I said, fuck this. Um, it was when we got the email saying that we were going to do mandatory masks again for a school year and I was like there's absolutely no way that I'm gonna mask my students while they're running around in circles inhaling their own carbon monoxide when yeah it was not a thing so I quit um, and I threw my trust up to the universe literally and I just put my feelers out and I tried to see where I could land and right before that is when I started this lakeside living thing when I um, had my Reiki attunements so I started the energy healing business I didn't know what I was doing I knew I could read people's birth charts I knew I could pull some tarot cards for people and I could send them Reiki energy so I actually had a really fun time when I was looking for a job after I quit my career it was like ooh, what can I dip my toes into mm -hmm. what have I always wanted to do and now I can do it and I, so I was like throwing applications out there and I got to work with horses for a short amount of time. Oh, cool. And that was really cool. And that's when I was like, okay, animal healing is a thing, you know, like these yeah. horses taught me. So I worked there for a few months and was treated like dirt mm. financially, mm. which I guess is a theme in the horse industry. So nothing against the particular place I was working. 
but I knew that that wasn't for me and I just kept having these um, pulls to make it on my own. Mm-hmm. I don't need no one telling me what to do. You know, I've actually had a couple dreams. The last two nights in a row, I've had dreams that, like, other people were controlling my space. Mm. And I, I wasn't angry. I was just confused. Like, why are you... What? Why? Why are you trying to tell me what to do? Mm-hmm. So then, now I do this, and I have Lakeside Living, and who knows? I can't even put a title on who I am. And that's exciting, because I do so much. I do energy healing. I do astrology chart readings. I read tarot and oracle for people. I learned how to read the Akashic Records. I think that's my favorite Mm -hmm. thing that I do right now. Um, I heal people's animals. And in general, I just want to help people find the best version of themselves. I'm here to give them some tough love to make them better. Yeah. Well, in turn, making myself better, right? Of course. Yeah. What about you, Victoria? Who are you? And why are you hounding me? (laughs) It's a a quote from Ghost. (laughs) Um, I am also, uh, oh, that's kind of weird to just, like, have to quantify who you are. Um, I know. <laughs> so, I do a lot of things. Um, by profession, I am an animator. I am an animator, <laughs> just in case that didn't come through. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I do a lot of different art modalities, um, I've kind of randomly given myself the title Art Wizard a while back, Mm. and it's stuck, and it's expanded, and I feel like I'm just going into that uh, character now, being the Art Wizard. So I paint, I draw, I've made jewelry, I'm getting into woodworking right now, which is interesting. Look at that. Yeah, unintentionally. Um, I've done upcycling furniture, um, pretty much... Anything and everything creative and art related. Um, I don't care if I've touched the medium before, I will jump head it, you know, head first into it. And yeah, Jack of all trades, kinda like you said. A hundred percent. And I've seen some of your work and I'm here to give you some kudos. Everything that you touch is like literally gold. Oh, that's so sweet. I and I'm not just trying to butter you up because Thank you're you. here, but <laughs> everything is like pure amazingness. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's fun. It definitely, I feel depressed when I don't do it. So that's a pretty big sign to me that I should be doing creative things. I tried to get into real estate for a little while and I think my soul died a little bit (laughs) in that time. It was like, what are we doing? What about the arts? Yeah. What was your drive to get into real estate? Did you think that it was going to be like a soul expanding experience or was it driven by income? Um, definitely driven by income and just, like, the need to survive in this world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Um, that, you know, like, the goal of what allows you to have a successful life in today's world is constantly shifting Mm -hmm. and getting smaller and it's never enough no matter how much you do, you always feel like you need more. And that's just the way that our world is weirdly set up, Mm -hmm. money-wise. If you detach from that, you can live a happy existence and not be bogged down by that, but it's a constant reminder. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. Um, Real estate's still something I want to know more about, but I've just realized that I need to kind of approach it in my own way and the way that the system's set up, it's not really for me at the moment. Sure. And that makes sense. That was kind of um, the eye-opening thing that I had also when I was in that jump off the ship, I have no income, like let's figure out what I could do. I felt myself, as much as I had the excitement of like, ooh, I could do whatever I want, I still had that like underlying fear of but I still have to pay my bills, you know? Right. And it yeah. was that struggle of how do I blend the two? So what I didn't mention before is that I still have one foot in the quote-unquote corporate world. I still work part-time for an online school as a teacher. And it's one of those things that I, like, don't identify with at all because for me, like, I'm literally just doing it. No, I don't want to say that. I'm not just doing it for a paycheck. I do love my students, but my heart and soul is not in the 
time clock you have to be here at 11:30 a.m. until 12:20 and that's it like that's yeah. the soul draining part of working that I'm not a big fan of yeah um 100% agree and I feel like a lot of people can relate to that because oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of us kind of know or in our hearts and our souls like have this calling to do something but you can't just step out and do what you want to do in this world without having a safety net of some kind. Mm -hmm. Whether that's a person, whether that's, you know, a savings account, whether that's, I don't know, a par parents, um, whoever it is. Mm -hmm. Somebody need to ca needs to catch, like, all of those bills that we weirdly have to pay to exist in this world. <laughs> Mother Earth gives us everything we need, and somehow we have a credit score. Oh my god, yeah, I mean everything and now they're trying to like monitor even more and it's like back off <laughs> yeah back off like you do not need to know every single six hundred dollars that we send each other right it's ridiculous yes yeah well i feel like should we segment <laughs> into the video <laughs> why not okay um we wanted to talk on this subject today um and we had a there was a video that we shared between each other recently and it kind of made an impact on both of us. And I feel like this is kind of where this conversation is headed. <laughs> um, so I'll play the video for you guys uh, so you can watch it and understand where we're coming from. Like, I don't want to do anything to make money. I don't want to. I just find it so terrible that at the young age of 23, I'm ready to check out. Like, I don't want to do anything at all. I don't want to work because my money's not mine. I don't want to go to school because I feel like I'm getting a degree for somebody else. Like, I don't want to do anything. And I feel like that's so sad. I'm having my regular meltdown and realizing I'm never going to escape capitalism. And I'm just to be a cog in the machine of productivity for my whole life so you know that numb feeling that you have now like that sense of ambivalence like you're kind of just going through the motions in the world and pretending and like ever this is just you? life I, I was at work today and i said insane. i can't believe that our parents that and our grandparents and everybody else every before them day worked and go to every work every day of their fucking life for the rest of our the lives same fucking monotonous Five boring ass shit 40 plus hours a week weeks of just vacation. to retire at the ripe age of what 60 65 70 where they literally can't enjoy the money that they have made quitting and that this generation doesn't want to work the reality is many of us that are in my age or a little older or a little younger are working jobs that do not care about us as people and i'm going to say that again because i think that's a very very important distinction that a lot of people are forgetting i am not going to fucking kill myself over a job that doesn't care about me as a human being. I am not going to put in a 60 hour work week and pull myself up by my bootstraps for a job that does not care about me as a person. Push to their limits. Like people are exhausted. If you work a regular job, even if you don't work a regular job, the constant stress from having to worry about how to make ends meet. Y'all, I've had a series of fucking panic attacks at fucking work today. Like, we are not supposed to live like this, y'all. I go to work so that I can afford my house and my car, and I have to have my car so I can go to work. And we all live so isolated from each other, so instead of, like, sharing resources, like, sharing a car so you can get to work, so that everybody doesn't have to have their own fucking car, that drives to the same place every day and then sits in a parking lot all day. We do not want to spend any more of our time selling stuff to people. We want to spend our time on something that feels good for the collective. I want to help people. What's wrong with capitalism? The first question. Well, on one level, and this may strike you as a bit contradictory, nothing's wrong with it. And what do I mean? I mean that it's working the way it always has. It is pursuing profits. The people who own and operate the businesses of the United States, the factories, the offices, the stores, are looking to make a buck. They're doing business the way they always have. So now that you've seen that video, um, thoughts, Jackie? 
I mean, to start I, it off. I want to help people. Yeah. That's all. I want to help people. That was the, the strongest message that came through that whole thing. I get, uh, I feel like this, this conversation can go two ways. In my reality, I'm all about do what makes you happy, expand your consciousness and everything will be brought to you. But then I also see the other side of the argument of, well, then who the fuck's going to do the work? If no one wants to do the work, who's going to do the work, right? For those who don't know, um, my husband is blue collar. He's an auto mechanic. He works for the village. So he's the one who fixes the police cars and the ambulances and he fixes the plows so that they can plow your streets. Um, and it's very interesting to hear his point of view that like he's the youngest person there and he's 36. The younger generation is not about that type of work. So yeah. what are your thoughts about that? Oh my God. That's a whole, yeah, that's a whole thing in and of itself. My partner was intrigued by welding at one point and was considering switching careers to go into welding. And I like being myself. I just did research. I do research about everything, everything, and everything. You know. I just, I know everything. Um, so I went and like did research about it just out of curiosity because I, no, I had no knowledge about welding. I was like, where do they even work? What do they do? Do they travel? Like who needs a welder? But a lot of places need a welder. I mean, they're everywhere. It's a very high paying uh, trade if anyone wants a high paying trade. It can be. Okay. It starts off as not just like any trade, sure. right? And then as you work your way up, it can get to that point. But you also, for the high paying trade, high paying jobs and welding you're usually traveling kind of similar to that guy that we know you're on site for a period of time you're doing the job and then you go home and you spend time at home yes. so it's also like a rigorous schedule as well mm -hmm. um but the reason i bring that up is like do you know anybody of our age or younger who is going into welding you know after school actually my neighbor's son. Really? Yeah, he's our age, and he, but he's been like hopping around jobs from my understanding, but he has that welding skill. Wow. He did the underwater welding. Oh, wow. Right? But that's like a scary ass job. Like, that's yeah. extremely dangerous. And mm -hmm. now he's working up high. Like, he like climbs fucking poles that are 100 feet high to yeah. weld up there. But th he was also raised in this sort of blue collar family, right? Right. But for the most part, anything, anyone younger than him, they're YouTube stars. They're YouTube stars. Or TikTokers. <laughs> TikTok influencers. <laughs> and I don't know who's welding is going to get done with a TikTok influencer. And I've seen, like, videos, too. Like, I have a few... I mean, I have a lot of friends, and I bet you do, too, in construction mm -hmm. who do, you know, hard labor. Mm -hmm. Like, having to break down a wall. Yeah. And then you give, like, you know, a Gen Z guy or girl, or whatever, a hammer, and they're like, yeah, Yeah. And that's scary. I mean, it's funny for a video, sure, haha, ha, look at, like, the difference. But at the end of the day, like, these, still, these things still need to get done. So, yes, it would be lovely if we all just sat around and got fed grapes and had someone fan <laughs> us while we tanned. Sure. Um, but it's also, I feel like... Uh, invigorating and there's something to learning a skill and being good at it and watching and like knowing that you have superseded who you were a few months prior like I feel like you're very much in this too I feel like I constantly hear about you going and learning something new I going to learning. another class yeah learning a new modality finding right. out how you can like help people through it you know you're not just sitting around and being like La 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 la. I'm Come go to get my me. Paint, like yeah. nails painted or whatever. Yeah. And I feel like, yes, the current workforce is fucked up in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But that's not so much on the head of working as it is the powers Telling that. Telling people how to work. And how and to, like, pay to people. Yeah. And also, like, you know, lovely companies like BlackRock and Vanguard and all these other companies that are buying up property left and right throughout our country, making it harder for someone to even own something. For listeners who maybe have never heard of BlackRock and Vanguard, would you like to give just a quick little overview of who they are? Obviously, anything that we say on this podcast, I don't want anyone to take our word for it. Do your own research, right? Yeah, but I... 
Honestly, go search it because I don't even know how to explain it in a succinct way that will make sense. They own everything. The, yeah, it's just this like shadow company that nobody knows about. But if you dig even a little bit, it weirdly comes up everywhere. They have their hands in every major corporation, every big financial institution. Like they're present yeah. everywhere. In the economy, in real estate, mm-hmm. in agriculture, in literally name Name anything, and somewhere in the back is BlackRock. Yes. So grubby fingers in it. Yeah. And, of course, who do they work with? You know, Lovely WEF and the NWO and all the other lovely companies that are sitting in their private jets and deciding how the par civilization is going to live the rest of their lives while we eat grapes and get fanned. Yes. By our slave lord. By you, our slaves. You need an electric car, but I'm going to take my private jet, and, and oh, uh, 85 my of my friends are going to take their private jet to one place. But you need to drive an electric car, and you need to feel bad about And your... you also can't have a gas stove in your house, because that's leading to Too climate much. change. Too much. But I can take my private jet to Davos and back, it's and so, shut up. It's so obvious. Like, my God. But people have just accepted. Ugh. Just accepted, okay, this is the world we live in. I'm just gonna blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Go on. So that's kind of, like, my take on it. Like, I don't have an issue with working at all. I think there's a benefit to everybody <laughs> working and, like, coming together. And whether that's... It, I understand capitalism in the sense that if you, you know, if you work hard and you put in more effort to achieve what you want to achieve than say your neighbor then you're going to make more you should be able to make more based on that effort it shouldn't be all level and just because you know sam over there i don't know why i said sam but Mm -hmm. sam over there is like working his ass off or whatever I now get to reap the benefits because we're all at the same plane, you know, because that's socialism, right? Like yes. everybody's on the same plane, no matter how much, how hard you work, no matter what you put in, everybody gets the same. But the part that people don't talk about is that right away, the plane goes to the ground because we're not all rich, right? We're not all living the high life. No, no, no. We're all living the poor poverty stricken life because that can be equal throughout everybody. Yes. I just had a conversation the other day with someone sort of in my family. So we were, um, this person is awake to a lot of things, awake to how the government does not care for us. The government has purposefully, knowingly done things to harm us, such as Agent Orange, 9-11. And this person is talking about how Capitalism sucks, right? Capitalism is the worst because they see the divide of how the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And I also see that part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, My whole thing with all of this is just take the fucking label off of the word. Like, look at what capitalism is, like, step by step, piece by piece. Whatever capitalism is as a label, that can mean so many different things to so many different people. And it also, like, gets emotions involved because you hear capitalism, which the news screams in your face, like, capitalism is ruining the country, right? So that's why people can be emotionally triggered by the word capitalism. However, well, it's like patriarchy and like so many other <laughs> words that they've coined the now. buzzwords. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing wrong with anything in this world. It's just about how you view it. But so this person's talking about how capitalism is bad. They know that the government does not have our best interest in mind, but they want socialism. Yeah. No. And it was it was a whole conversation about like, okay, well what is socialism? And they told me socialism is the government giving everyone an equal playing field. But is the government good? No, the government sucks. So then why would you want the government to control? Because socialism, the government controls the doctors you go to. They control the food you're able to buy. They control the home that you live in. They have complete control over your life. So when I was, when I was younger, I was raised in a very liberal household. And I was kind of brought up with that victim mentality of the world is against me and I deserve to be taken care of. I see that the government has money. I'm doing the best I can to make it right that. And that is a mindset. I was stuck in that in that crushed down. 
the, all, all my parents could do would work two jobs that are cleaning houses and, you know, like being a maintenance person. Like that's the best that we can do. So the government should help us. And once I broke out of that mentality and I realized that if I just put my energy towards something that expands me and helps the community around mm-hmm. me, then holy shit, like look at all this that's coming to me. Yeah. It's a mindset shift. Yeah. Well, every, so there's a lot of things I could say to what you just said, <laughs> but I, <laughs> um, um, I'll start with this. Um, if you ask any rich person, anybody who's like made it, um, one of the main things that they talk about is that money is like a river, right? Yes. And it just flows. And you can either take part in that river and take a little morsel of it, or you can just like watch it flow and be like, damn, what a nice river. I wish I was in that river. You know what I mean? Like there's enough money to go around for everyone. Yes. And you just have to allow yourself to like believe and work towards getting that little morsel for yourself. And by, like, victim mentality, you're essentially just closing yourself off and being, like... Like, it's like that, you know, little child that's just, like, having a temper temper tantrum. Instead of, like, doing something productive, you're just like, everything sucks and I hate life. Like, it's not productive. Nobody's going to help you when when you're in that state. Instead, when you start, like, presenting what you have to offer people flock to that energy. Mm -hmm. They want a little bit of that. They want to know, like, why are you so secure in in what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Like, how did you get to this point? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, allow yourself that space to think that, you know, it is possible for me. Like, yes, it's hard. And we all go through periods of time where we think that, you know, it's just pointless. And, like, what's, what's, (laughs) what, what is this all for? You know, life is so hard. But, it is achievable and I think it's not so much capitalism as it is like the powers that rule our world forcing like they're forcing the middle class out yes pretty much intentionally yeah 100% intentionally it's not like the system of capitalism it's not the system of you know you earn what you produce what you yeah Yeah, like what you contribute right and instead it's like sure you earn what you contribute but we're gonna cut that in half because you know fucking this elite over there needs a new porsche or something you know what i mean like that's kind of the world that we live in and it's not so much capitalism as it's like like serfdom or like totalitarianism at this point where like you have a ruling class Mm -hmm. and then everybody underneath just suffers from whatever decisions they make that's not like i don't know we're shifting into a different ism at this point absolutely and we had this conversation briefly at the antique shop you asked like if this younger generation doesn't want to plow the roads and they don't want to fix the cars and you know who's gonna do it like who's gonna do it when the people who are in their 30s right now are dead and my point to that i see the world completely splitting into whatever and you know like uh, people that i follow astrologers other podcast people they've been talking about like this split and you get to choose do you go to the light side or do you go to the dark side my opinion of that is is i see myself going to a homestead i see myself going to a smaller community of people that i choose to be around because human beings are not made to fix the world like we're not made to take on the world's problems we're not made to know what the fuck is going on even in indiana You know, like, we're made to be in our small, knit community of maybe 60 people. Like, we can handle those emotions. We can handle those problems. And when it comes down to that, like, sure, I can grow enough lettuce for 60 people. Paul can plow the road for 60 people. Like, that's that's how I see one of the choices going. Mm -hmm. And I, I... my, I could be wrong, but I think that you might have a better idea of what this dystopia will look like because I completely detach from technology. I don't want to understand AI. I don't want to understand any of that. So do you have any opinions on what the other side might look like in yeah. the metaverse? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's not a very pretty sight. I mean, for me, too, I see myself on a homestead as well. Mm-hmm. And Probably I think online. it's... <laughs> We'll on my own, baby girl. <laughs> Part of the community. Thank you very much. And that's what I'm saying. We'll be in the same community. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not going to live at your house. <laughs> no, I don't want you at my house. So. <laughs> I'm going to live at my own house with my own garden. <laughs> but to, to add to that, like, you're not going to be the only person producing food. Exactly. There's going to be multiple people yes. in the community producing food. There's going to be multiple people uh, educating mm-hmm. our younger generation, which is a huge thing right now. <sighs> Homeschool your kids. Oh, my God. Rice coming from an ex teacher, please. Jeez, for the love of God, (laughs) the stuff that they are. Anyways, um, yes. So definitely, and that just makes more sense. And I know, like, I have a lot of other friends who would agree with that statement. That at the end of the day, homesteads are where it's at. And like, should we all just buy pieces of land? Like, uh, I don't know. Here's the right thing. (laughs) And again, I always try to put myself in the mind of the listeners because I'm trying to force myself to remember that not everyone is where I am mentally. If someone would have told me when I was 21 years old, like, you're going to be on a homestead. You're going to be responsible for growing your own food, for raising your own children, for doing all this stuff. I would have been scared shitless. And I would have said, fuck that. You know, like, I'm here to collect a paycheck. And I, I didn't have the self-worth at that time. Yeah. But, like, you're able to grow into that, and it's so much more gratifying. Yes. And just to say to the listeners, too, please ask questions in the comments. Um, We don't know exactly where you all are, and we would Mm -hmm. love to answer stuff for you. We're just kind of, like, in our own bubble, but (laughs) enter in, you know? Like, call us out. I don't know. Whatever you want to do, just interact with us. We would love to hear from you. Um, And on that note, 100%, everything you just said, like... I was the same way. I think in, like, mm-hmm. my early 20s, I'm, I'm pushing 30 at this point. <laughs> um, way and, back in your early 20s. <laughs> oh, my God. No, but in my early 20s, I was hands down, full on in the hustle culture. Mm. Full on. I was going to downtown Chicago every day, uh, commuting downtown, spending the majority of my time there. I was on a very, like, quick, rigorous schedule for years, Mm -hmm. for eight some years. Mm -hmm. Um, And my whole perspective of life was different. And, you know, COVID had to happen for me to like step aside from that and kind of like crack open the shell of what is life. Divine intervention. But I wanted to go back to what you asked me earlier about the other side. The metaverse. Yes. Um, The other side of this reality that we're moving towards is control in all aspects of our life and we're seeing that already today and i think that's why people like you and i are so like resistant to it because we don't live right next to a metropolitan city we live further away Mm -hmm. so we get to see the nature aspect of it we get to see like the community aspect of it and i feel like in the cities you weirdly are closer together with a lot more people Mm -hmm. but your sense of community is very different Agreed. Like, you don't you don't really know your neighbors, even though you're living in an apartment complex. You right. maybe know one. Right. But you have ten. Or, you know, 50, 50 whatever. Yeah. Um, and everything is kind of, like, taken care of for you already, so mm-hmm. you don't really think about, you know, like, I don't know, everything. Like, everything's just kind of in the background, and it's taken care of, care of for you. Mm-hmm. We're much closer to, like the day-to-day aspects of life, I feel like, and we're even able to kind of separate from the system and do things our own way if we want to. Oh, 100%. And the more you get further away, the easier it is to do that as long as you have the skills to do it. So on the other side of this world, right, if you go into the technocrats world and how they see it, um, everything's going to be monitored. Everything from what you post, and I, I mean, already kind of it is, but... For your safety. <clears throat> yeah, under the guise of safety and security, um, if you post the wrong thing, uh, your, you know, social credit score will get <laughs> lowered. Mm-hmm. Um, and they already do this in some countries, like China, for example. Mm-hmm. There's cameras on every block. They watch everybody's movement. They watch what they do. If you litter, you get a few points taken off. And the more points you get taken off, the less freedom you have, the less you can travel, the less you can buy. And once again, we're back to, like, the socialism, but on, like, a crack level (laughs) of technology. Yes. Where it's not just, you know, these are the rules and this is what the government gives you, but the government is also watching you at home. 
watching you online, Mm -hmm. watching you outside. It's like, there's no way to escape it. Um, and what, what exactly does that give us? Like, how does that benefit us? So I'm, I'm again, trying to see this through the lens of someone who is maybe insecure, uh, maybe someone who is afraid of the world, like, good, I know that I'm not going to be posting anything bad, so that's going to weed out all the meanies who are trying to brainwash me to think what they're thinking, right? So I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of a person who wants that, who would welcome that. And to me, that's just so, like, contracting. and. But you also don't know what's right because they change what's right every day. Oh, that's, yeah. You think you know what's right. You think you know, okay, three masks. Three masks is what right, what is what is right. And then two weeks later, masks don't work. Right. But you're still wearing three masks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, the, there's, there's like the goalposts. I'm like missing a word, but the goalposts of what is acceptable are constantly shifting. Right. So you can't be always right. But if you are living in fear, then you reach for that goalpost. Like, well, I have to do the right thing, so now I'm going to wear three masks. And now I'm going to stay home for six months. And, you know, 100%. And they're just literally pulling your strings. They're puppeteering you left and right. Yeah, at that point, I mean, lost cause. I don't know. This turned really depressing. Not really. I feel like... (laughs) I don't know about you, but for me, I was full on that person. Likewise. 100%. Yes. And then something snapped me out of it. Because it was easy. I didn't care. I didn't know anything, and I didn't care. And I was so, I was so busy. And everybody gives me this, like, excuse, too. I'm too busy Mm -hmm. to read. I'm too busy to know. I'm too busy to watch this video. Yeah, you're busy doing scrolling TikTok and Facebook. Yes. Taking selfies and editing your filters. Sit in silence for 10 minutes. You'll realize how much time you have. Uh, There was a time in my life when I was afraid to do that. Of course. I was terrified. We're conditioned to. To see what would come out, yeah. We're conditioned to be afraid of that. And then all of a sudden you're sitting there in silence and what do you have going through your mind? I can't buy myself flowers. <laughs> you know, it's true. I know. It happens to me too now. And I don't even Whatever listen to Whatever song it is, you know, like yeah. they even get you then. Yep. So you have to separate from that too. Mm-hmm. You have to like wait long enough to like hear your voice again mm-hmm. and then be like, what? That is, what do you want? if you do have an internal dialogue, if you're oh, listening God, to this yeah. and you don't have a voice <laughs> in your head, please let me know because that's interesting. Please comment if you don't have a voice in your head. We would love to talk to you some more. <laughs> we really would because that is fascinating to me. So I do want to bring this back a little bit to that video. Yes. Um, and I want to give a little bit of understanding to the younger generation. Because I'm not trying to poo-poo on what they're doing. Um, It's something that doesn't align with me. But I do want to give my perspective as far as astrology goes and the human design. Because that's how I started understanding other people. When I started to understand astrology, it, like, gave me, um, yeah, just a different way to understand. Like, oh, you're acting like that because you have this placement. That doesn't make it, like, okay if you're being an asshole. But, like, I understand where you're coming from. For the most part. So you and I were born when Pluto was in Scorpio. This is a generational thing. So the year's 1983 to 1985. Pluto was in Scorpio. For the most part. Until he retrograded. Um, People who right now are 28 to 40. Our generation. Pluto and Scorpio. We're here. Pluto is the planet of like destroying. He breaks shit down. So we're here to destroy the secrets. Scorpio is like the mm. the taboo, the cabal, the nasty mm. nitty gritty that no one wants to look at. People who are 28 to 40 right now, like we're here to break that shit up, dig it up, expose it, right? Mm-hmm. Kind of like this podcast that we're doing. Yeah. The generation after us, born from 95 to 08, Mm. people right now who are 15 to 28, the young ones in the workforce who are crying about how hard it is to work at Starbucks, it's, they were born with Pluto in Sagittarius. 
So Pluto the Destroyer is here to break down the themes of Sagittarius, the philosopher, the traveler, the explorer, the Mm. wanderer. So they're here to dig up, like, why am I stuck in this area? Why do I have to be confined here? I'm here to expand. I'm here to see more. I'm here to do more. Yeah. And then for the last 15 years, since 08, Pluto has been in Capricorn. Pluto and Capricorn, Capricorn is governmental structures. Capricorn is the sign of, like, top-down, this is authority, those types of themes. So, like, in general, the feet, like, the air from 2008 has been all about figuring out the ins and outs of corporations and breaking them down. Yes, exactly. And that Pluto entering Capricorn, that was his, like, tuning fork. Like, this is what we're here for, guys. Wow. Here's a financial crash. Yeah, like, shit's about to go down. So let me finish the astrology, and then I'm going to give credit to the young ones. But uh, Pluto is working his way out of Capricorn. So this is, like, the final degree of digging. Uh, And this is just an entire breakdown moment. I'm expecting all structures to crumble. Education system, financial system, government system. But it's all for the best, you know, like shit needs to fall before it can be rebuilt. So also everyone right now who's under 15, zero to 15, they're born with this. So as they come into the workforce, they're here to break it down even more, expose all the worst parts about structures. So I understand why the younger generation doesn't have the same work ethic as our parents and even our generation. Yeah. And, but honestly, in a way, good for them. Good for them for not just submitting to the fucked up system that we have. Good for them for having the awakening of like, this is not what I want. This is not what my generation wants. We're here to change it. Mm. And I also understand that like, they're naive, right? They're immature. I've been 18 before and thinking I can change the world with a feeling. And you know, like it's that spark of, I want to change this, that we should be celebrating. Mm -hmm. The way that they're going about it right now sure might not be like what we think is best, but like it's always about the future. It's always about seeing what the fresh perspective can bring to it. You also have to go and make some mistakes before you get it right. Yes. And I feel like we all did that. And that's kind of, you know, mm-hmm. we're just seeing this on TikTok, and I feel like TikTok is a huge platform for the younger generation oh, to yeah. spread their message. Yeah. And even the older generation, too. So it spreads like wildfire. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're hearing, you know, these messages come up more and more often, and we're at least getting the conversation started. Like, maybe the answer isn't just to not work, right. all of us. Right. But maybe it's to work with greater intention, or maybe it's to work with a different payout or some, like, different uh, measure of success. You know what I mean? And you know what these influencers do? You know, so many of them, like, sure, we c- it's easy to just think about influencers as, like, shaking their ass on TikTok and getting likes. Because, yes, they're, uh, they're appealing to the dark side of the internet. But there are plenty of influencers who are helping people through their own shit. Like, they're showing, oh, like, sure. look at my disability and here's how I live life. And then people appreciate what they're giving and they compensate them for just being themselves. Yeah. I think that's a huge part of what's yeah. coming. Like, just being... Not paid. Like, I even think the money system is going away. Well, I mean, it, it is, it's crashing. <laughs> I know you're not keeping up, but it, it's going. It's like, to, like, soon. Please. So, please. Yeah. And then, yeah. Buy just, gold and silver. I'm about to go to that freaking shop one day soon. Oh, nice. And give them my money. Give me coins. Irreplaceable items. Yeah, something. Precious metals. But yeah, I mean, all of it is shifting. So I guess the sooner we start thinking of ideas of what's going to replace it, the better off we'll be, you know? Because it all starts from chaos and destruction, and then we slowly build Mm -hmm. the pieces back together. The only thing is, you know, people like Hitler went into power from destruction, so we just have to make sure that doesn't happen. It's all about intention. If if you're in the mindset of fear, shit's going to be fucked. (laughs) Yeah. You can't, like... Yeah, you have to just, like, be aware and be, like, ready for what's to come. Like, be prepared and have your next steps in order. Like, you know, doomsday preppers. Got it right. <laughs> like, no joke. Um, but you don't know when it's going to happen, but it's nice to have that reserve for when it does. Without fear, though. Doing it just yeah. to know, like, I'm choosing to do this. 
<laughs> probably won't need it, but you know, it's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like, oh my god, the world's gonna end tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I need 25 gallons of water today. I have to go buy all the beans today. Like, just, shh. 50 rolls of toilet paper. I'm gonna be in the bathroom for the rest of the next month. <laughs> I do have to throw in one last thing from human design, just about the yes. work thing yeah. in general. Yeah. If you don't I love know, it. If you don't know what your human design chart is, Google free human design chart. Look it yeah. up. Because this one thing can make a big difference in your life. So 70% of the population, including you, are generators mm -hmm. and manifesting generators. 70% of the people on earth have constant access to energy, motivational energy, yep. doing work moving around, getting things done. The other 30% of us mm -hmm. don't have that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's on and off. So I'm not saying that the other 30% of us are lazy. No. But I do want to give a little bit of grace and ease to manifestors, projectors, and reflectors. So just know, guys, that if you are a manifestor, a projector, or a reflector, we don't have constant access to energy. So if you need to take a break, take a goddamn break. It's okay. It's okay to recharge yourself to get that energy back and hang out with generators every once in a while and see if they boost your energy. Hey, generators need to have a moment too. We're not always kicking. Sometimes we need we need a recharge. And then we look to other true. generators <laughs> or et cetera to do so. Uh, Mark is actually also a generator and I think he's the one person that I can actually like recharge from and we both benefit from it. It's not like one person loses and the other feels better. Because there's mm -hmm. an energy vampire situation that happens with some people too. Yes. Yeah. Where they just like Give suck all of your all energy. Yeah. And then after you leave and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> what did I just do? Um, so yeah, so he's like the one person that I don't get that from. But everybody needs time to recharge. Absolutely. Yes. Um, and I didn't mean to say that generators don't need time to recharge, but it's easier for you guys to get up and get motivated when you yeah. need it. It's just yeah. different. So just look at your human design if you are a person who, and even like generators, you have that constant access to energy when you're excited about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a boring nine to five, I just clock in because this is the time that my boss told me to be here. And if you feel yeah. useless at work, you're not going to have that energy. Yes. You do need to be lit up by what you're doing. Yeah. And just to add to that too, I feel like if you are stuck in a nine to five and you are working for someone and you hate your job just remember that baby steps are still steps and oh, even if you yes. take 10 minutes a day before your work day or after or during your lunch break or whatever and you make steps towards something that you want to be doing in the future and not just making money for the man like that is also an amazing thing and that should be like you should feel that you know like that's not to say that you're not working towards it it's not i feel like we get um a lot of these messages of like millionaires by 30 years old or I started my company and within six months I was making six figures Fuck the timeline or like um, Too much pressure. I don't work at all I work four hours a week and I make a million dollars like that's just not that's just not realistic for the most of us I mean it makes a really good sales pitch on TikTok it does and it's really intriguing and everybody wants to just like be rich real fast but at the end of the day like most of us have to work real hard for a while and the, the main basis of it is just believing in what you do, being passionate about it, and not seeing it as work. Just doing it because, like, you really just believe in what you're doing. The internet uh, helped us with that instant gratification thing that we all have now. The dopamine? Yeah. The addiction that we have to getting little hits of dopamine? My goodness. Just instant, though. Like, this instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So it is hard to slow down and think of it as one step as a time at a time but one step is more than zero steps right yes i feel like we we continue to live on this earth and i'm not talking about like anomaly cases obviously people pass all the time from random things but on a normal trajectory of life you stay here as long as you have something that you're doing like as long as you have a purpose and you're mm -hmm. working towards something regardless of the like the attainment right and like what your final end product is or how much money you've made yeah. just that like inner drive uh -huh. for something is what keeps you alive and once you lose that you go on to the next whatever that is i have an interview coming up with my fabulous aunt Jeannie, who yes. has been living with aids for over 30 years and it's because she's not done 
Yeah. I'm so excited for that interview to happen. Yeah. Um, I, I want to add one last thing about this nine to five, and then we can probably wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Starting a gratitude journal is what got me out of my soul-sucking first ever teaching job in Mm -hmm. a a sort of inner city situation. Um, I decided to stop focusing on how hard my job was and how painful it was to work with these kids. And I started writing down every day, I'm grateful that I could afford gas to get here. You know, I'm grateful that my coworker can make a joke with me. Yes. Small things. And by setting my intention on the gratitude, things started unfolding. So 100% focus on the good. Keep and there's a the lot of good. There's a lot of good to be focused on. Like us sitting here right now and having this conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm very grateful to have someone in my immediate environment mm-hmm. that I can talk to and resonate with. Same. And we I, didn't used to. Right. Just a year ago, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I was grateful at that time for the people on the internet that I could listen to who had right. my mindset. Yeah. Baby steps. Yeah. So, you know, join our join our conversations. We'd love to hear from you. Please. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, feel free to send an email to lakesidelivinghealer at gmail.com. In addition, please like and subscribe to this podcast. Share it around to your friends. If you'd like to get a hold of Vicki after this podcast, the links for her Facebook and Instagram will be in the show notes. If you'd like to get a hold of me, links to lots of my various platforms are below my Facebook, my TikTok, my Patreon, and follow me for free on Insight Timer, where I talk more wisdom. Thanks for being with me, Vicki, today. This has been enlightening and beautiful. Yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure as always. Take care, everyone. All right, bye. Bye.